So let's begin with James Gerrish, Portfolio Manager at Shoreham Partners and Lead Portfolio Manager with Market Matters. James, welcome. Thanks, Andrew. Great to be here. So talk about some of those valuations being stretched. You've actually come up with the US stock. Are you seeing perhaps better value in the US than you are locally at this point? I think if you think about uh, what's made the market, um, I guess, uh, rich from a you know, historical standpoint is uh, a small number of stocks that have uh, that are big index weights that have been uh, really strong over the past 12 months or so. Uh, so we're still seeing pockets of value in Australia as well as overseas. I mean, obviously, the US market has got um, a greater depth of companies, greater breadth of companies. Um, so it does make it a little easier to, um, uh, to find names over there. But you know, I'm not here saying that we should all be investing, uh, looking at the US. We, we also uh, obviously look at the ASX and um, it's just about being open-minded and, and finding the best value, whatever exchange that it's listed on. All right, so you've come up with a consumer cyclical stock. Why is that? Yeah, it's a, well, firstly, it's, a, uh, it's, it's an interesting company. Um, it's got a great brand that's starting to grow in Australia. Um, I'm into the outdoors, I'm into boating. Um, and if you're similar to me, you've probably heard of this name before. It's, um, uh, you'll now see it in Rebel Sport. Um, you'll see it on the uh, jersey of the North Queensland Cowboys. Um, so it's starting to get a bigger footprint here in Australia. Uh, I'm talking about the brand Yeti, the stock Yeti. Um, so they make outdoor coolers, uh, eskies as we call them here, drinkware, etc. So this is a quite a large business. It's three and a half billion dollar market cap over in the US, uh, and I think it's undervalued here. And it's got a really strong growth runway over the next 12, 24 uh, months and strong and, and longer. So you say it's undervalued. In fact, we might bring up the share price if we can. Mm. But it took a bit of a tumble in 2022. Um, why was that, and and why are you seeing that value now? So if I you know, cast our minds back to when it listed in 2018, it listed at $18 a share. Um, it ran up to $108 a share. It was a really strong beneficiary of COVID. We all um, you know, bought coolers and um, we were all, uh, I guess, holidaying at home and buying all those sorts of things that underpinned um, uh, you know, holidays uh, internally rather than traveling abroad. Uh, Fast forward to 2022, it was also a, what I call a supply chain casualty. So, um, you know, when supply chains uh, yeah, uh, struggled in 2022, Yeti struggled to get product and they, they fell all the way back down to, um, you know, circa 30, $35 a share. So this has been a, uh, a company that's had a pretty volatile history, yet the business has been improving. So if I think about it now, it's trading uh, you know, 14 times earnings. It's been in its in its its shortlisted life. It's been as high as sort of 35, 40 times, and has been as low as sort of 12 times earnings. So in the past 12 months, and we've owned this since 2023. So if I think about our international equities portfolio that we made available to Market Matters members in 2019, uh, it's done about 20% per annum um, since it's been uh, published, and we've had some phenomenal um, uh, winners in there: Microsoft, the Trade Desk. Blackstone, uh, Zillow, a bunch of others. Yeti hasn't been one of those. So this has been an underperformer in the portfolio. Uh, we bought it in 2023 about 39 bucks. It's about 40 bucks at the moment. So it really hasn't done anything for our performance. But I think from a business point of view, the business has actually gotten better, particularly over the last 12 months. Uh, yet the share price is not reflecting that. Does it face some significant headwinds in uh, the looming prospect of tariffs. We've heard what Donald Trump mm. has had to say. Uh, there are already tariffs in place in various regards there, but uh, given what he has planned, difficult to know, of course, whether he's going mm. to follow through, but what are the potential risks there? So you think about a stock that's undervalued. You, it, it needs to be undervalued for a reason, and markets are forward-looking. So um, tariffs are not, we're not hearing about tariffs for the first time now. We've heard about tariffs um, during the run-up to the election. Uh, right now, Yeti produces the majority of their, or the, 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 the production of Yeti products are primarily in China. So that's, that, that's a risk and they would be impacted by tariffs. Um, the company has been aware of that and they are um, diversifying um, the producers they use or the manufacturers they use for their products. Um, they've said by the end of 2025, about 50% of their product will be produced outside of China, so they are addressing it. The issue with the, 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 the important thing also in terms of tariffs to recognise is that it's not 
um, you don't just necessarily see a tariff and see a, a negative um, impact to um, a company or um, the, you know, the, the, um, the way things are um, uh, produced, etc. So there's some swings and roundabouts in terms of what tariffs actually will mean. So um, I think there's, you know, from a stock perspective, I think it's been sold on the back of this concern around tariffs, um, which ultimately I think is, you know, priced this stock really attractively for the growth that it's going to deliver in out of years. So, you know, they sell about $1.8 billion worth of product. Um, uh, they'll do that in, in 24. That's about 10% growth on 23. Um, and then we're expecting it to continue uh, at around a 10% clip in the, year, the outer years. So you can buy something that's on 14 times, which is sort of 10 PE points cheaper than the market. Um, it's about a, you know, obviously the history of Yeti's been a little bit volatile, but if you think about valuations where it's traded in the past, it's sort of, you know, 30, 35% cheap relative to its own history um, and, uh, and growing quite strongly. So I think it's, um, you know, in a really interesting spot right now. And the other important thing I'd make, Andrew, just before um, we move on, is just around the diversification of their earnings base. So it's primarily been a US uh, earner, so the bulk of its sales in the US, but it is expanding, as I alluded to earlier, uh, Australia, Canada, Europe, um, and then they're going to grow in Asia in 25 and beyond. So uh, I think there's some interesting growth drivers for this business going forward. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that regional footprint. So Asia now is their next focus, is it, for the real growth that they're likely to see there? Yeah, so really ramping up in, uh, so if I think about the international business, so think about Canada, Europe and Australia for now. That's growing at about 30% uh, year on year clip in terms of sales growth, uh, which is really, really strong. Um, and then Asia is uh, going to come online from 25 and beyond. So that's probably the next kicker in terms of growth. These are, these are um, high-end products, so high-end coolers. So um, they operate on really strong margins, gross margins around 60%, uh, but they're not cheap. So um, this has probably also been a, a reason why the market hasn't really latched onto them. So we've seen a lot of these, I guess, luxury type brands really struggle in the last um, 12 months or so. Um, but if, you know, if, if policy eases, if economic growth picks up, as we're anticipating under a Trump presidency, then that's going to be a positive, putting tariffs to one side, that's going to be a positive for products like Yeti. Is, is that growth likely to be largely organic or are you seeing any potential for acquisitions along, along the way? Largely organic growth. So they've got, they've got a, a, a great runway organically. So they've only, you know, they've been operating in, in, in the US um, for a long time and they've built a really robust business over there. Um, the, 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 the growth internationally is going to be, I guess, underpin the next level. But also, um, what you see is, 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 I think, one of the keys to Yeti going forward is around partnerships. So partnerships in terms of branding of their products. So, um, you know, uh, from boat manufacturers using their products uh, into, you know, putting them in boats, etc. From sporting teams uh, branding their products. So there's a, there's a huge runway in terms of leveraging off other, other distribution networks uh, because their products are simply fantastic. So from a, um, you know, from a product point of view, uh, they've got fantastic products that the market loves. The love of this brand is pretty significant. So you leverage that love into other distribution channels, which Eddie are doing. Um, and that, to me, is going to you know, help to support this growth over the coming years. So are they expanding their product range? Because I look at some of the things that they produce and sell from, uh, let's talk about tumblers, mugs, uh, straw mugs, cups, dog beds, dog bowls. I mean, it's a big scope that they have there in terms of their product line. So what you do, I guess you, it's all about, I guess it's like anything in business. So you develop a, a brand that, is, um, that stands for things. So Yeti stands for quality. Um, it, it, it stands for, um, it stands for um, yeah, delivering what you're after as a, as a customer. Um, that's going to be expanded into other areas. So whether you made mention of you know, coolers and tumblers and drinkware as their key um, uh, areas at the moment, but they are expanding that brand or leveraging that brand into other things. So um, that, will drive, uh, that will drive growth going forward. And I guess the other thing I'd, I'd highlight is around the distribution of their products. So they distribute through third party retailers, but they've also got a really strong distribution network themselves. So um, buying direct from Yeti. Um, so that you know, helps with margins, helps with the dynamics of the underlying um, business as well. All right, 
James, let's just actually bring up that share price again. What do you see as the catalyst where it's actually going to turn up again? So that's a, I mean, that's a, I, I sit here and think about catalysts all the time for share prices. So when I think about us buying this stock in 2023, um, you know, it's been void of a catalyst since then. So um, one of them, there's a couple that I'd highlight for, for viewers. So $100 million buyback in place. Uh, so that's going to uh, ramp up. So that's sort of, to me, that um, underpins the downside um, a little bit. In terms of when you're, um, you know, when you continue to grow earnings, a market can only, um, so if you continue to improve your business, then obviously the stock price gets cheaper. So valuation is sort of the, the main catalyst for mine at this stage. We often see this concern around uh, looming tariffs and you know, the, 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 the market getting fixated on what ifs. And when you see that actually come into play, that actually can be a, you know, the certainty that that delivers can actually be a positive. So um, to me, clarity around uh, Trump being uh, coming into play um, and then moving towards diversification of their um, uh, production base. So all of those things are going to combine to, um, in my view, you know, push Yeti higher. And it's been, you can see on the chart there, it's been a little bit of a struggle in terms of share price. A few false dawns in the last um, 12, 18 months. Um, but if they continue to improve their business, the share price will ultimately follow, Andrew.